Our next family are the Catastomidae, the suckers, and they are closely related to the Cyprinidae. They probably split off from the Cyprinidae. They've got twice the number of chromosomes that the Cyprinids do in general, and so it's thought that there was some sort of hybridization event or mitotic disruption or something that caused this group to split off. They look kind of similar to the minnows. They've got the short dorsal fin and kind of a long body. Um, and there's several species in Kentucky, not as many as there are minnows. And the way we recognize this group is you look at the mouth, duh, you know, they're suckers. They've got a sucker mouth. It's pretty easy to identify them. We're going to concentrate on the ones that are most common and that we're going to run into here in Western Kentucky. Now, this is not something that you're going to see in the key, but the sort of way I keep these straight in my brain is I think that there's sort of three groups. The buffalo fish, the carp suckers, and then the quote unquote regular suckers. And that's not a good term for it, but I can't think of a different term for it, okay? And so the buffalo fish and the carp suckers look very different, and then the other suckers um, are different from those groups. And you know what's unique about this group is uh, there's a lot of the common species are very individually recognizable. So these are not too tough to identify. The first thing we're going to look at when we're trying to decide what group to put these in is the dorsal fin. Do they have a short dorsal fin or a long dorsal fin? So what I call the, the regular suckers, the typical suckers, have that short dorsal fin like the minnows have. But a few of the catastomids have a long dorsal fin. So let's look at those first, because they're easy to identify. And so if you got that long dorsal fin, you're in the buffalo fish or the carp suckers, for the most part. And of course, we start with an exception. So we got a long dorsal fin that is not a buffalo fish or a carp sucker. Uh, but again, this fits with the theme of the catastomids is that all the species are pretty unique and so you can sort of just as soon as you look at it you sort of know what it is and the blue sucker which we're looking at here is one of those fish it's a very unique looking fish so it has the long dorsal fin but it has warty lips it's got a very pointed nose and it's very obviously blue so when you catch one of these you're not going to mistake it for anything else um, so again, here's another picture of that. You see the long dorsal fin. Here you can see the bluish color. And when you get these in breeding conditions, um, you know, the males are very intensely blue. And in fact, their bodies are completely covered with tubercles. Their whole body feels like sandpaper. It's a very cool fish. And here's uh, a look at the warts on the lips. And this is... Um, Pretty uncommon. You know, a few of the species have this, um, but these are really pronounced and they're called papillae. And here's uh, Paul Rister with the blue sucker he caught. Again, you see the big swollen lips with the big warts on them. So you're not going to mistake a blue sucker for anything else. Now, you do have some others that have that long dorsal. Well, these are the buffalo fish and the carp suckers, all right? And so how are we going to split those two apart? We look at a structure called the subopercle. And so this is part of the opercular cover, but it's at the bottom. And so you look at that, you look at the shape, you can split these two groups up. So if we look at the buffalo fish, it's like a perfect half moon or a bow and arrow. And so one way to remember that is buffalo fish have a bow and arrow. And so you can see that it's sort of like a perfect half semicircle. The carp suckers, if you look at that subopercle, it's more of a right triangle. It's triangular shaped. Another way they describe that is if you look at the subopercle, where is the widest part? The buffalo fish that have that bow and arrow, the widest part is right in the middle. You could take that subopercle and fold it in half and the sides would match up perfectly. Whereas in the carp suckers, that widest part is more off to one side. And again, it looks more like a right triangle. And so once you see this, it's pretty easy. Now, otherwise, these fish look pretty similar. They've got big scales. They've got dull coloration. And um, 
here again we're looking at the shape of that subopercle between the buffalo fish and the carp suckers okay so if you got a buffalo fish these are uh, not a real important sport fish the bow fishermen will take some when they're up in the shallow spawning but they are a really important commercial fish here in kentucky and so um, that's what their importance is to uh to things like kentucky lake for example so we've got the big mouth buffalo and the small mouth buffalo and we also have the black buffalo which we'll mention here in a second but you got the big mouth and the small mouth so how are we going to tell them apart you look at the mouth of course right and so um if you look at the small mouth the mouth is a little bit more inferior the upper lip does not it stays below the eye whereas in the big mouth the upper lip would kind of even with the eye um, and so that works but what's easier is to look at the upper lip the size of it and in the big mouth buffalo they have a very thin upper lip which you clearly see here whereas the small mouth buffalo has big fat upper lip and um, this is pretty obvious and in, in every specimen I've ever seen it's pretty obvious um, you also note that on the small mouth they have kind of a keel on their back and this becomes important if you want to identify the small mouth from the black buffalo the black buffalo does not have that keel and so um, the black buffalo are not uncommon they're not as common as the small mouth um, i'm not 100 percent sure that i'm always identifying these right in the field um, the black buffalo has more pigment in the fins it's black it's darker and it doesn't have that keel so that's something to look out for um, but a big mouth buffalo is super easy by looking you know, just looking at that upper lip okay so then if you've got the other subopercle type you're you've got a carp sucker and these um these look a lot like the buffalo fish and we have um, the common ones we're going to run into are the river carp sucker and the quillback. There's also a high fin carp sucker, which we'll look at here in a second. But the river carp sucker and the quillback are pretty similar. And again, we're going to look at the mouth to tell them apart. And so if you look at that bottom lip, you have a pretty obvious nipple on the river carp sucker that the, that the quillback doesn't have. So one way to remember this is, you know, babies suck on nipples. And so if you've got a nipple, you're a carp sucker, all right? The quillback, um, also, if you look at the, you know, where the mouth goes, does the mouth make it to the front of the eye or not? Um, again, the nipple is usually pretty easy to see. The quillback has a quill on its back, so it does have a very a longer filament on the dorsal fin that the buff uh, excuse me that the river carp sucker does not have um, and so if you look at this again this is what the mouths look like and so this is the lack of the nipple and so sometimes you ask yourself well is that a nipple i can't tell when you see it it's really obvious um, and then here again we're looking at the carp sucker and you can see that nipple on there and they're also trying to show you here the angle of the bottom lip is you know it's more obtuse in the river carp sucker it's sharper in the quill back but it's that nipple that that just really seems to be consistently a good character and we mentioned the high fin carp sucker which is um it's like a quill back it's got that long dorsal filament but it's really long in fact the dorsal filament is longer than the base of the dorsal fin and so if you fold that dorsal filament down it will extend past the base of that fin um, so if you look at it it's got a nipple and a really long filament you've got a high fin carp sucker they're not as common okay so that's all of our long dorsal fin suckers and so the rest of them all have the short dorsal fin that's similar to the minnow it has a different number of rays and so um, again we're can kind of continuing with the theme in that a lot of these species are just very unique and, and just easy to identify right as soon as you see them 
Um, and so the northern hog sucker, the white sucker, the spotted sucker, um, and also this list actually should include the western creek chub sucker. Those are all pretty unique fish. And we're going to look at them all here in a second. And then you also have this group of fish called the red horses. And the red horses, they are all a little more similar to one another, but we'll point out how to tell some of the more common ones apart. Okay, northern hog sucker, one of my favorite fish. Great name, I think. Love the name. Um, very well camouflaged on uh, cobbly bottoms. Very cool looking fish. Very easy to identify. Not only do they have the unique coloration, but it looks like they got hit on the head with a hammer. They've got a concave skull in between the eyes. So, um, and also their mouth is almost very round. Their upper lip is very round. So, um, these are just super easy to identify. Um, they're, these are an interesting fish in southern Missouri. They're a very popular gigging fish. And certain times of the year, uh, in the Ozarks where they have those clear streams it's uh, kind of traditional to go out at night and go gigging for hog suckers and you go out and you find a sandbar and you set up camp and you build a fire let the fire build up you go out on the stream at night shining a light looking for these gigging them then you bring them back to the sandbar and cook them up it's kind of a tr traditional thing to do now these suckers all have those floating bones and so um, you got to watch out for that, but uh, you know they're they don't they're not a popular sport fish, but uh, you hear that uh, stories of people that eat them like like these hog suckers and say they're good. Okay, white sucker, um, pretty common, pretty easy to identify. The most obvious characteristic here is the scales get bigger as you go toward the tail, and you can see this in this specimen that I'm showing you here and in a live specimen it's pretty easy. These also have warts on their lips so you can think uh, you know the blue sucker has the warts and the white sucker has the warts so if it has you know a color in its name it's got warts is one way to think about it. Um, but it's the scales getting bigger toward the tail that's very obvious. Um, and so then another thing to look at when you're identifying these fish, does it have a lateral line? Some of them don't have a lateral line and that makes them easy to identify. If it doesn't have a lateral line, it's gonna be a spotted sucker uh, or a Western Creek chub sucker here in Western Kentucky. Uh, spotted sucker, again, really easy to identify. It's got rows of spots. And in fact, the rows of spots almost look like stripes. It almost looks like a striped bass. Those spots are very well defined, very easy to see. And like I said, no um, lateral line. So these are pretty hard to confuse with anything else. They're pretty easy to identify. Um, these are also called musky suckers. They're a very popular bait to use when you're fishing for muskie. Um, so, you know, and these get pretty large. So if your bait is this big, you know, how big is the fish you're fishing for, right? Uh, There's a very common fish in Kentucky Lake. We get these all the time. And again, here you can see the rows of spots that almost look like stripes. And that makes it easy to identify. The other sucker that doesn't have a, a lateral line is the Western Creek Chub Sucker. And, you know, again, you're not going to really mistake this for anything else. Um, it's got the, the stripes here are vertical instead of like horizontal in the, in the spotted sucker. You know, I said the spots kind of look like stripes. Anyway, um, you look at that anal fin. The anal fin's got, you know, it's pretty big. It's got kind of a funny shape. And uh, the coloration is unique. The coloration... The colors are somewhat like a northern hog sucker, but not quite. But it's got those very obvious vertical bars, but the sucker mouth, nothing else really has that. Okay, so that leaves us with the red horses. And the red horses are a really cool group, really common. You're going to run into them a lot. You know, when. You find some of these streams when these go on spawning runs and that they will just pile up into a little stream and if you startle them they'll thrash about there. Um, very interesting fish. We get them all the time. They, these, these are probably the more challenging suckers 
to identify you know right there in the field but it's not too tough now we're going to concentrate on the most common ones we're going to run into uh, in this part of Kentucky um, the species we're likely to see are the smallmouth red horse the golden red horse maybe the silver red horse we also have the river red horse the black red horse um, we could run into but really the small uh, the smallmouth and the golden are the two that we're most likely to run into for all these red horses the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the caudal fin and so we want to look at the caudal fin but the trick is it has to be in a fresh specimen so when we first catch it we're looking to see is that caudal fin is it really red or is it more slate colored and not red um, and again this has to be in a fresh specimen and so if you're sampling and you get a bunch of red horses and you're going to pickle them and save them for later uh, you might want to scribble some notes or take a few pictures so that later on you can answer the question hey when I caught this fish did it have a red tail because that's going to be an important characteristic now if you look at the pectoral fins and the pelvic fins they're all red that's probably why they call them red horses because they got red in those fins but it's the tail fin it's the caudal fin that we need to look at all right and so if we had that red caudal fin that's going to make it most likely it's going to be a smallmouth red horse or a river red horse okay if that caudal fin is you know slate colored more dull doesn't it's not obviously red then it's going to be a golden red horse silver red horse black red horse so one way to remember this is the red horses that have a color for their first name all stick together or another way to remember this is if you're a red horse you can either have color in your tail or color in your name but not both right because the ones that have a color for a first name do not have color in their tail the ones that have a color in their tail are the river and the small smallmouth and they don't have color in their name so maybe that'll help you I don't know okay so the smallmouth red horse is very common and you can see here again we're looking at that red caudal fin and so now you know if we have a red caudal fin we ask uh, is it a is it a small mouth or is it a river um, and one of the things to do is to look at the bottom lip and we do this a lot in the red horses you look at the, sh the bottom lip and kind of is it straight is it curved does it have a sharp angle if it is straight that's a small mouth red horse and so here um, one of my keys is you want to close the mouth and so you can see my hand in this picture here where I'm sort of pushing on the nose and I'm closing the mouth and that bottom lip is straight across on the one picture that's a small mouth red horse you see the other one that has a slight cleft or a slight curve to it that would be a river red horse it's not quite as straight um, one way you can remember this again is you know rivers aren't straight rivers are curvy and so the river has the curvy bottom lip I don't know uh, you know I'll try it maybe that helps I don't know um, another way that we identify the river red horse is we look at the pharyngeal teeth so again these are very similar to the minnows and we can look at pharyngeal teeth and the river red horse the pharyngeal teeth are molar like like a freshwater drum and I don't think any of the other suckers have pharyngeal teeth like that so if we're looking at these and we have some questions hey pull out some pharyngeal teeth it's real easy and it's real obvious if they've got the the river red horse type and here again I'm showing you the straight bottom lip this particular picture is a short head red horse not a small mouth and for a longest time all these were called short head red horses and why are they called short head red horses you know, their head is not is, is relatively short compared to their body but um, the small mouth was considered a subspecies and more recently it was elevated to its own species so here in Kentucky we don't have short head red horse we have small mouth where I used to live up in Illinois we had the short head very similar though okay so that's our red tailed red horses how about our slate tailed red horses again if they don't have color in their tail they got color in their name and so it's the gold and the silver or the black 
And again, we're going to look at that bottom lip first thing, okay? And does it have a very sharp angle and a very clear cleft in it, or is it more moderate? And if it's moderate, it's the golden red horse. And if it's really severe, it's the silver red horse. The silver is severe. Again, I don't know if that helps you remember it or not. And so you just got to look at a lot of these things, right? Here, this is not very severe. This is a more gentle curve that's golden. Golden is gentle. Eh, I don't know. Here, you see it's more severe. You got that cleft in it. That would be a silver. Uh, here, we've got a picture that's comparing the golden and the short head and the silver. So it's not the small mouth, it's the short head, but very similar. Again, you see the moderate curve versus the flat, straight flat across versus the, the more intense, acute cleft. And this is from the Fishes of Tennessee showing the same thing, only they're in different order. You've got the silver, then the, the short head, then the golden. So you gotta look at some of these till you get comfortable with it. Having said that, I think the golden is probably more common around here than the silver. But at least we know, uh, I mean, if you get a silver, you'll notice it. You saw the pictures, you'll notice that cleft. Okay, last thing is, well, what if I don't have a fresh specimen and I don't have notes? And so I don't know what the tail looked like when it was fresh. You can look at the base of the scales and get a clue in some of these fish. And now this is for um, if you've got a small mouth versus a golden, right? The small mouth should have a red tail, the golden shouldn't. If it's preserved and you don't know, you can look at those scales and you look at if there's a spot at the base of the scale, that would be a small mouth. And so here I'm showing you scales that do not have that spot at the base versus scales that do have that spot. So again, the small mouth, it has pigment in its tail and you know it has color in its tail in its scales but not in its name so that maybe will help you remember it okay so um most of these suckers are easy to identify uh the red horses can be a little tough but with practice i think you'll get it and so that's it for catastoma day um and i'll talk to you later let me know if you got any questions all right